so much again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next video. Darn hornets. I think I'm going to break off a stick and put it at the entrance of that hive. I don't think they're liking the fact that I took away their entrance reducer. Hey, everybody. Um, they're not. If I'm trying to... Uh... I'm just getting home from work good. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'ma just get right into it because this ain't my this ain't a normal live that I do, okay? Uh family member uh in, in this situation. Hey everybody, a family member in our garden community needs our help. So um I'm here to do do as give you as much help as as I can give you. This is going out to Homestead Heart. If anybody has Homestead Heart's personal um, phone number or email address, everybody email Homestead Heart and, and could you please have her email me at levfarmer73 at yahoo.com. I've been trying to get in contact with her because I saw her. Um, hey, <laughs> happy Tuesday. This is a little different, okay? This is what we do in our garden community. We help each other however we can. Yes, we try. To, she need help with her bees, and I'm a seasoned beekeeper, and uh, and I I know what's wrong. So I'm trying to reach out to Homestead Heart, and I hope she sees this video, and um, and click on because I can help you asap. And I I really don't want to do the whole video thing. I really want to talk to you on the phone if if not even face to face on uh the live chat or whatever whatever they call it, zoom because it's so believe it or not the it's the the problem is so simple to fix but if anybody go over and watch homestead hearts video that she just put out today the the video is she's losing her hives and this is, right, FaceTime, I do FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, I don't care. But this is one of those situations, if you start keeping bees, comments, typing, she, uh, she said it in her video, reading about it, there's nothing like hands-on experience or somebody that knows what you're going through. Like in the garden, when we're in the garden, we plant stuff. Reading about it is entirely different than actually putting your hands in the dirt, right? Totally different. You can watch a billion videos, read a billion books, but until you get out there in it, you won't know. Uh, leave me a message on her video. I left I left messages on her video, but I need her right now because she is in Georgia. I'm in South Carolina, so it's dark where she is just like here. And I got a few tips that she could do right now while it's dark get ready for the morning because you don't want this to go on no longer okay number one i just i ran out in the backyard do, do lady leg coming out hey babe what? oh i just make sure you back in the house um huh okay so um number one if 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 she can't get in touch with me i'm gonna show you right off the bat and this is something that'll help um all my other new beekeepers, okay? This was a big deal. We've been keeping bees for now for about 11, nine-ish, 10-ish years, okay? And I've pretty much been through everything. And what you're going through right now with all those bees, when all those bees are beard, bearding on the front of your hive, it could be a ton of different things. Most of them are solvable, easily solved. One is this. I saw you, um, Homestead Heart. This is I'm talking directly to you right now, okay? And everybody, please excuse me, okay? Uh, but if you plan on keeping bees, this might be good for you. I'm gonna show you how I feed my bees. I know, bless you, baby. I know when you have um, when you watch a lot of the 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 people online or on YouTube, when she did have a live video today, right? When you watch. Um, people, hey, baby, bring me my glasses. I can't see a notch. When you see people uh, keeping bees, bless you, on YouTube, it's totally different from a backyard beekeeper. Totally, utterly different. Please don't ever let nobody lie to you and say it's the same because it's not. When you're a commercial beekeeper, um, that's a full-time job. That's literally 
quit your job and that's what you're going to be doing. Number one, the way they feed it, the way you fed your bees, I saw and I wasn't quite sure your whole setup and I really wanted to talk to you about it. Um, but this, I'm going to show you how I feed my bees. The only way I feed my bees, I won't do it no other way because of those that bee that you had that you had in your hive is called a white face bald bald face hornet a white bald face hornet evil evil little monsters okay so those things will destroy your hive but it's ways to keep them away now number one they're bad number two i'm gonna be honest with you it's not it's not exactly your fault even though i i think i saw you make a small mistake it's not really your fault because i'm gonna be honest with you i have never in my entire life seen as many bald face hornets as i've seen this year remember everybody every year i go and do a big lsu gold harvest right my lsu gold fig trees now that i have three of them i had hundreds of figs the size of golf balls or bigger. Okay? Thank you, honey. I couldn't get them, and I didn't even bother doing a video because all of my trees were covered with bald face hornets. I didn't taste one dog on fig. I take that back. One that fell on the ground. Why the bald face hornets? And you're right. They get really big. Okay? When you can see them, you can see their facial expressions. Get away from them. So, they hunt after the sugar. They just don't be at mm, buttholes for no reason, okay? They are hunting for sugar. And the thing that they got from your hive was you used sugar and you put it in that big jug, right? When you turn that upside down, one of the reasons why your bees was acting funny, you may have lost your queen the first time, was all that sugar water, what I do with the frame? All that sugar water runs down the frame. Bees is just like humans, okay? They don't like being wet because they get wet, and if they wet for too long, they just like you, you, you go get in the pool, right? If you in the pool for too long, you ready to get out after a while because now, even though it's hot outside, it has chilled your core temperature so much, you need to get back out and heat back up, right? Bees ain't no different, but they don't have a choice. So usually they'll stay on the outside of the hive when they just get soaking wet trying to dry off. So as that liquid, that liquid sugar runs down inside that hive, it does a bunch of stuff. Number one, it will drown the bees. They want to get away from that. Hey, everybody. Number two, it will create mold really fast because what that sugar water is going to do in our hot climate that sugar water is going to turn into basically wine it's going to start fermenting okay so i know one of them times you open that hive you probably smelt a little bit of wineish or moldy type of smell because all it takes is about 24 hours and you're going to smell that sugar caramelizing inside your hive which creates mold number three What's going to happen is it's also going to attract every freaking walk of life in the in the valley. I'm talking about from mice to rats to uh, all wasps, hornets, everything you can think of. So I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to stop talking and, and I'm going to show you real quick how I like to feed my bees. This is it. Okay. I'm going to break it all down for you. I brought, I ran outside and I got some of our extra equipment. When you watch our videos, you usually see a lot of our uh, extra equipment sitting around, laying around, okay, in the yard. So, all right, this is how we do it. Now, remember, all this is our, our, our junk equipment, okay? Right here is a hive body, empty hive body. This one got attacked by wax moth, so I don't use this anymore. So this is this is what I want to show you, okay? Pretend, wait, where's my frame? Let's pretend this is your hive body full of frames, okay? 
This one is full of your frames. It's full of your bees. This is how I, I'm going to put that there just so you will know. This is where the bees are supposed to be living at. This is the house. Now, what I do is I cut a piece of plywood, okay? You really can't find these in the store. You might have to make this yourself. It's nothing but a piece of plywood that I set over the box, okay? And you see all the frame lines on there because the bees glue that to the top. And then I cut it in the exact shape of this hive body. I cut a hole right here. I'm going to show you up close. And right here, I take a plain old piece of screen that you use on your porch, you know, on your screen door. And I staple that around there. And I'm going to show you what I do with that. Okay. So I put that down. I put that down right there. And instead of having a big giant jug, you don't need that. Because if it's several reasons. I'm going to show you in a minute, okay? So all you do now, because that screen is sitting right here so they can get too close. Now that just brought it up a quarter of an inch. See that? It's sitting right there. And you got a gap right there. That gets that right off of that frame. Now you can even see where the bees have glued the jar on. So this is what I do. You take your jar. This is why I keep all my spaghetti jars and you see uh, Prego and spaghetti jars. I take a normal push pin like that and I punch a bunch of holes in the top of it. Just, just say about 20 holes. See that? Not too, too many. Just enough. About 24 nice size normal cannon jar, okay? Or a spaghetti jar, about the same. 16 ounces or so. All right? Now, you would take that. Say we punched a bunch of holes in here. You got an old lid that you can and you ain't going to use it twice. So that, that lid is no good no more. Hang on to it. Because now it becomes a feeder jar. All right? Punch a bunch of holes in it. Just like we did our spaghetti jar. Fill it full of your sugar water and make sure, this is another thing, okay? Make sure your ratio, I use a 50-50 ratio, either 50 part sugar, 50 part water. I will even go fit, uh, 75 sugar and 25 water. And the reason we do that is because it becomes thicker. And everybody think it's supposed to be pouring out and pouring onto the, the bees. That's not what you want, okay? Especially if the see if, if they're eating it slow because you got to keep track of everything that's blooming around your neighborhood, not just in your yard, but in your whole area, in your whole neighborhood. Like right now, we know that the crepe myrtles are blooming and our bees, for some reason, they love the crepe myrtles. So we know when those crepe myrtles go, the bees start going crazy again, okay? So you have to pay attention to your bees just like you pay attention to your pets and, and your children. And what the they, trees is blooming. And the tree, what, what trees is blooming. Because you'll know your bees start cutting up once a certain, uh, like um, honeysuckle. Ours love honeysuckle, uh, 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 um, echinacea. Crepe myrtles, all that stuff bloom at different parts of the season. But we know after all these years what sparks our bees. And you're going to know in your area what spark your bees too. Now let's get back down to it. Make sure your stuff is thick, okay? Because what, what you don't know is the bees have the tongue. And that the tongue is just big enough to fit in that little hole that you made with your push pin. OK, if you look at your jar, when you see them feeding, if you could actually see it, you will literally see their tongue coming up through that hole like that. Just like that. That's how long their, their tongue is so they can get to the sugar without it. pouring. We don't want it to pour down into your hive. OK, we don't want it to pour down into your hive. You just want it thick enough so they tongue, just say, 
20 bees would be on those 20 holes. And what they do is take that food and they share it down to the rest of the hive. And they keep passing it on, passing it on all the way to the bottom of the hive. That way, nothing, nothing will get spilled down and poured down in the bottom of your hive. And this is the other thing you got to remember, okay? Um, when, when temperatures go from hot, I mean cold, cool in the morning to hot in the afternoon, what this does, you know, just like cannon, just like cannon, it creates a suction, right? So nothing is coming out right now. But as the day heats up, all through the day, the hotter it get, that liquid expands. And that it, as this is getting hot inside the hive, it needs somewhere to go. So it will start pouring out and draining down into your hive if this liquid is too thin. So you got to mix your ratio according to the weather. If we in hot, hot summer weather, I make sure it's 75 75% sugar, 25% liquid water, okay? Or sometimes I just put their honey back on them. So that's why when people say, um, do you sell your honey right now? I, I don't sell it all. I got still, we got still got tons of honey, but I got to feed my bees too. I give it back to the bees. So I got to take care of them. So that's why, yeah, we still got plenty, but we got some for us. We give y'all some, but we got to give it back to the babies too. So... Sometime when it's hot like this, the only thing that can withstand this type of weather through the hot, the cold, without causing a muck is their own honey. That's why they made it like this. That's why they did it like this. See that? I've been having this jar upside down way before I even start talking on this video. But you see, it's only just, just getting to here with a drop. So let's get back to it right here. This is what you're going to do. We got our high body with the bees. That's where they at. That's where the queen at. We just made our little uh, in-between feeder top, okay? We made our in-between feeder top. You take your jar with a bunch of holes at the top, and you turn it upside down. You set it right on that screen. I promise you. I promise you. It won't go nowhere. If you're scared that this screen is going to bust, think about how many times them kids running in and out the screen door and don't bust that screen. This screen ain't going nowhere, just with staples in it. I've had this one now for five years or so. It ain't going nowhere. Then if, even if it does punch through, it's just going to land right on top of the frames inside. Okay? Let me scoot that over give you a better. So, to protect that, Here's the other problem. If you leave this out, if you leave this out in the open, this, just like it's sitting on top of the hive, this is a beacon to every animal in the world. They can see that sugar water. Even if they don't care about the sugar, they want the water because it's so hot outside. Just like the birds, they peck your fruit because they're trying to get a drink, right? No different. So right here, your animals are trying to get the water, but once they figure out, hey, there's some sugar in here too, oh my God, you know, calories, we need it. So now you got everything, squirrels, monkeys, birds, bats, cats, and dogs trying to get that jar. But here's the thing, hornets, wasps, and every other bee that can hurt you and your hive can smell it too and they can see it they see the same thing that the honeybees see here's the other thing okay other battling hives remember i keep telling y'all my hives keep being attacked by wild hives they smell it and see it too so i figured out if i hide their food and minimize it i might have to change this one jar out maybe twice a day but it saves my hive, and that's just extra hard work that I got to do to save my hive. So I'm going to show you how I keep this out of sight, out of mind from every other creature in the world. Now watch me. Okay, we got, our, we got our hive body here with the bees in it. We made our top. We cut a hole, put our screen, put the jar right on top. Now it's time to hide. Here's Here's a, just a throwaway box, okay? You can make this out of anything. It don't have to be another hive body. 
you put that box on top just like that and the only sole purpose of this box is just to hide this jar then you take your top and you put it on voila no other creature can get to it no other creature can uh they can't see it even if they smell it they can't get to it and trust me it been working for us it been working for us for years and every single time that i try it another way being lazy without putting that top on oh here's another thing too it keeps the rain out of the hive it keeps the rain and stuff out you see the commercial gardeners the commercial gardeners do this they do two ways that i don't i don't you know i'm not a commercial keeper so this is what they do they put that big jug like this right on top just like that don't even care it's just a hole no screen nothing just like that right that we ain't commercial keepers we don't got like fifty thousand hives so that ain't what we want to do now we ain't feeding a hive that's so big i've done it but i'm gonna tell you something with the jug the big giant bucket of sugar water that you had Here's the other problem with that. This is why I always go with a small feeder jar. When you have a hive that's not that big, they're not going to consume all of that feed. So it's going to sit there for days. The stuff that don't leak out, it's going to sit there for days and days and days, okay? And what's going to happen is, the heat is going to heat that up. It's going to ferment. The bees ain't going to want it because now it's turning into wine. The bees don't want it. So it's just going to slowly leak out in the hive and force the bees to beard on the front of the hive. And inside, the only thing it's going to attract is everything that you do not want. So the, the, the situation you have right now, I, I, I think I may have seen what started it, which was the sugar sugar water number two how to fix it um if you I, I don't know if you do or not if you have an extra hive body because i saw all of the ants she did. oh she did have an extra she took one inside or something like okay that in video. okay you have an extra hive body what you want to do is get rid of as many ants as you can like you was doing when you was brushing them off okay now, take that hive somewhere completely different across the yard. Don't feed it at all. Take that hive across the yard, dust off as many ants as you can in that location, and then move it somewhere else because the ants now got the scent, okay? Move your hive somewhere else in the yard on your land. Then turn around and uh, your, your brood in that from what I can see, put that brood chamber back in that box. They were not dead. I know it was a lot of cat brood and it looked like some of them was trying to escape. Some of them are not dead. You just got to get them out of the light. Once you put them in a the light like that, they play, they play dead. You know what I'm saying? Get them, get them out of the light. Get them back in another hive body and move it across the the field away from the ants that already got they scent. What you're going to do, scoop your bees up and go put them back in that hive. Once you do that, those bees will be strong enough to fight off any other small ants. And the white, I mean the bald-faced hornets, the, um, the, the, the bald-faced hornets, they're still going back to the location where they got that good stuff last time they ain't gonna be trying to look for your new location on your hive okay because they what they do just like your honeybees they find a location then they go tell their friends to come to this exact spot if you move your hive over two feet they will not figure that out i promise you any other reason i would say move it five feet to the left even your bees gonna have trouble finding it because they hone down to the square inch where their entrance is. You're going to want to move your hive across the yard, put your bees over there, reduce your entrance 
to only a quarter size hole. I know that sounds crazy, but a hole the size, just say the size of a quarter or a silver dollar, okay? That way they can defend better what comes in and comes out. Don't worry about whether they can get, your, your bees can get in and out, trust me, they get in and out just fine. That if the smaller the hole is just like the military, you know, you funneling. Funnel the troops in. That way we can just pick one off at a time. The bees do the exact same thing. Where do you think humans get all of their war knowledge from? From nature. How do you think we know how to build bridges? Beavers. The funneling technique. Bees. Everything we've learned that we keep claiming for ourselves, we learn from nature. Okay? So is no different. Reduce that interest to a quarter or a silver dollar size hole so they can defend their hives from these other ants and any predators like the bald face hornet. A bunch of bald face hornets, your bees will lose. But if they can only come in one or two at a time, you your hive will never your hive won't even give them a chance to get past the first hole. So you got to give them something to fight with, especially since they are um uh, they're weakened. They're brand new bees, and they're weak. They haven't built up their their uh, their uh, numbers yet. So when they're weak, don't open that hole. I, I, don't forget if when she moves it, she's gonna have to restrict their movement for a while. Right. Once once you move the hive to the other side of the yard. Thanks, babe, because I would have left that out. Once you move it to the other side of the hive, put your food jar on it, your feed jar, and don't. Cover your whole entrance. Don't let them out of the box for 24 hours. I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of secrets. If you can please call me, man. I, there's so many things that I want to show you to have be successful at this. Um, you don't want them going nowhere because if you keep them in the hive for 24 hours, they reset their GPS. Once they come out the hive, you're going to see them swirling again like, where are we? Okay, where are we located? Versus the sun, they're going to reset, and that's where they're going to go. If you don't do that, they're going to put a branch. Right, they're going to fly right back to where your hive used to be. So when you're about to let them out of their new location, put a branch with some leaves and stuff in front of the hole, so they have to figure out their way out, and then that's going to make them feel like a tree just fell on our hive. So we need to see what's going on. Trust me, they're so much smarter than people think that they, that they are. You, you could put a branch in front of the hive and they're going to relocate without moving the, the box at all. And they're going to still reset their GPS like what the hell just happened? Because they're thinking in nature, a storm happened, something happened. We need to know what's going on. And that's how they figure it out. So your problem right now, bald face hornets ants sugar ants the sugar ant problem is solved because it's just too much feed i bet you i don't even know but i bet you it's it's wet inside of your hive i bet you that sugar is dripping down in the hive because i know when you have a big feeder like this see the size of this feeder the only reason i use this big giant pickle jar feeder is this is when my hive is like six boxes tall because I know I will refill this in eight hours because all of during a slow season, that's the only reason I have this. I don't feed my bees with any more than about 16 ounce jars or maybe a nice big spaghetti jar or whatever that is, a quart. I will, yeah, a quart jar is the highest I'll go and I'll just keep refilling it. We literally keep quarts of sugar water mixed with honey their feed we'll keep it in the house ready to just every day you know okay i know they probably ate all of that first jar of feed go switch it out boom 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 just like that now i'm gonna tell you the trick to feeding your bees without even needing to get suited and booted putting your suit on or anything okay now here's the other sweet reason for this screen when you got this screen on here like this, not only is it good to sit your jar on so they can get right at the sugar water, 
but you can come and change it out. Watch this. Wrong lid. You can come change your feed out without bees coming out and popping you in the face. Okay? Open the hive up. Take that body off. You take that feed off. Put that feed on. Close it back up. You that's didn't. The that's the best. Trust me. You don't got to get suited. You can go out there in your pajamas if you want to. You're not disturbing them and you didn't let in a bunch of light because now I'm sure you know by now, the more light that you let into your hive, they they go, they get pissed off real fast because that light is ruining the brood, ruining the mood, ruining the groove. Here's the other thing. It also keeps you from messing with the, the frames and because it's easy to crunch the queen. Easy to kill her. And... I wanted to tell you that I've been working so hard. I wanted to tell you this so bad. Oh, my God. The queen, before you buy another queen, this is why Lady Led, she specializes in requeening. She literally uh, breeds queens. She, We haven't done it this year, but she literally breeds queens every year and sell them or give them away and trade them with everybody else in our beekeeping community. Now, here's the thing. When you first get that queen, even though it was a nuke, okay, because you don't know the people that, that had that nuke. They'll say, oh, this was a nuke. This is this is running. It's good. That don't mean anything. That's why we don't trust people. Because it those frames might be full of brood, might be full of honey, might be full of pollen. But that don't mean they just didn't put that together right before you got there and threw a queen in there. So you don't know. You don't have no idea. You you put your trust and your faith in them people, especially you spending all that money. So I never trust that. I, I'm not saying everybody is crooked or evil. I'm just saying I never trust that because those people, they want their money. So um, what you want to do is that queen, she still might be itty bitty. You know a queen is mature because once she itty bitty, she'll fit right in with the rest of the colony. You won't be able to find her. You will think she got killed or, or squashed or she's dead. She just looked like everybody else. And the way you point out a real, strong, solid queen, she won't be able to lift that butt. <laughs> she's she like, she like a black lady. She, that butt is heavy. You hear me? That thing loaded. So she be dragging her butt all through that hive. She can fly, but she can only fly for about two or three feet because that thing's so heavy. You know what I'm saying? So that's when you really can point her out. And believe it or not, it's even hard to point her out like that too. Um, we never paint our queens. We never paint them. I know what people say, like it's easier to find a queen when you keep putting the paint on the back. But I've done some reading and what I found was sometimes the rest of the hive don't like that. And they may attack the queen with that dot. First, they'll be trying to get it off of her because that's where it goes. Her helpers clean that mess off of her back. That's why people got to keep painting the queen. But then it can also mean... Let's turn on. We don't know who this is because I took the I took the paint off the old queen. We don't know who this is. And it smells. And it got a smell. That paint has a, a smell to it that they don't like. We don't paint our queen. We just keep our eye on her and move real slow. Move real slow. You will see her. And I'm going to tell you this. When you go in the hive, I know this sounds funny, but it's the truth. When you go in the hive, be as quiet as you can. You know why? Because you can hear the queen. She makes a noise like Beaker from the Muppets. She's like, me, 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 me. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but don't she, baby? Yeah. She makes it. It's a high pitch. It's a high pitch. Me, 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 me. You can hear her. If you look in the hive, Tell, tell uh, Tamu and them, shh, quiet, and listen. And you can hear her 
telling the rest of the hive what to do. You got to be real quiet. Don't let the wind be whipping past your ear or nothing. Calm day and you can hear her. It's very faint. Me, 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 me. That's the queen. That means your queen is in there doing fine. She's giving orders. Leave her alone. Trust me on this. I, I'm, I'm not talking about nothing I've read in no book or no video I watch. I'm telling you of our years of experience, what we've done. I don't, the knowledge part of it of what, see, I don't even know what the tongue is called. It's a word for the tongue. It's the dang on tongue. I know what I'm talking about. You don't always got to be going to be college to understand. Look, I, we certified. I don't know all the terms, but I know my bees. And I know how to take care of them. Homestead Heart is in here. Wait a minute. I seen somebody say, hey, hi, Homestead Heart. There she is. Hey, Homestead Heart. Hey, look, can you do me a favor? Because I'm worried about your bees. Um, We sitting here having dinner, watching your video like, oh, my God. Oh, we ain't even finished eating. Lady Leia sitting right here. We like, we got to help her now. We got to help her right now. So please email me. So I can give you my phone number because I see your problem I, and we can fix it. We can fix it. I want that to fix um, because I know what it feels like to lose a hive. Trust me. Trust me. I know what it feels like. It ain't even the money. It's it's when you you know what I'm saying? It's like when you're when a sapper garden, when his chickens got killed. I know that feeling. I think she said they left. She left a comment. She said they left. The bees left. I mean, that's what it said on the screen. You got to help me, babe, because I can't read that. No glasses, not a nada. She, she typed, they left. I, I don't see nothing else. The bees, the bees left. So it's too late? For that one, but maybe going forward well, for the other one. Okay. Here's the thing. That's not bad. It's bad, financially bad. But as a maneuver, a strategy, it's actually good. So they must have gone. They must have swarmed. They must have swarmed. Because once they're being attacked so long, they will leave. Here's the thing I want you to do. Look up or look at the tree line around your land. Because usually they don't even know where they're going to go. So they will sit on a branch until they figure something out. This late in the season, they won't go far. Right now at night actually be a perfect time. Right. Right now? Well, no. Well, she got, she ain't oh, just got an acre. Acres. Right. She on acres. Oh, this is plural. Because gotcha. what we do is go out at night and watch our tree line. And we'll always find them on a branch somewhere. Because they don't go far when they first leave from a situation like this. They go somewhere close, close to a tree line or straight up on a branch as they can to their location now. They, I promise you, they are on your land right now somewhere. They have not left yet. If you, I know you got a lot of land, so. Ask her if she still got the, the nuke boxes. Do you she still? Has a trap. Right. Do you? They, they ain't gonna come back to that because the ball face hornets done. No, the nuke box. Oh, 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 oh right, right. Do you still have your nuke box? If you still have your nuke box, keep that. Because all of that queen scent, you can catch either catch them again. They will be looking. Yes. Go put that nuke box back outside on the tree line. Because I know you got a lot of open area and then there's a tree line. There's your fence. I'm trying to remember all your videos, but so I'm sorry. You got your fencing and you have tree lines all around your land. Go put your nuke box back out by your gate or a fence line, or a tree line, because what they're going to do, they're going to smell their old house. It's just like us going back to our old neighborhood, they're right? they're desperate. They're like, we need somewhere right. to go. They're desperate. At this time of the season, there's really nowhere to go because all the hotels are, you know, no more vacancies. So they are desperate. They're hanging on a branch somewhere. I promise you this. I promise you. Go set your nuke back. Little, not nuke back. Your nuke box <laughs> back on a tree line or a fence line i promise you they will come home if they haven't already left okay so trust me trust you got to trust me on this i can't even 
I don't have scientific and, and, and educated data on this. I just got experience. Okay. So, um, we've caught our bees over and over and over. I promise you. Our first you. hive had to be caught. Our very first hive ever. Within the first just a few days. Right. Our first, very first package. Our story is so crazy. Our very first package of bees swarmed out on us, absconded, left the hive that I built. We found out I'm why. No, nope. that's okay. We found out why they absconded because I didn't put a bottom board on the hive that I built. I just put a bunch of screen like this on it and they didn't like that much light. So guess what? They went straight up into a pine tree, maybe 20 feet up. You don't even want to know how I got them back. First time beekeeper, we had had the bees for how long? Days? Days. Days. I don't know nothing about bees. I don't know nothing about, but I knew I wasn't about to let my $200 fly away. <laughs> you understand? So while she was at work, I was still a nurse. So I had all week off, only worked the weekend. And trust me, I did everything all the way down to the point. I just pulled out the water hose and sprayed the whole damn hive and, and threw a rope over the dog, used my bow and arrow, threw a rope over the branch and shook them down while they wet. Okay, y'all saw me do this in one of that last video where we caught that swarm, put sugar water in a spray bottle, they can't fly away. Plus they so busy eating off of each other. Trust me, it, I learned all of this. We learned all of this in stuff days. Like, in I learned days. how to identify the queen that she, day. She was the first queen finder. Cause I was like, baby, we just gonna have we to buy more bees. All over, and, finally and she found. I saw her. You could see her. Yeah. You could see her, and she was itty bitty. But you know how we found her? Cause just like you found the queen on the ground when you first got your package, we found the queen. Cause everybody was on top of her. We like, what is this ball? And, uh, uh, Lady Led. She's like, I think this is her. That was her. She was tiny, but that was her. So I wanted to get on here real quick to help my sister, help my brother out because I know what it feel like being a first time beekeeper. Trust me, my heart, my heart went out. I'm just, look, I ain't even finished changing clothes, nothing. I, I said, I, I don't know how to contact Show her. Show real fast so she can change the feeder on the other one. What do you mean? She didn't see you doing the feeder, like how, oh. what to do with the, the other hive that's still alive. Oh, oh, okay. Like, it's still a hive alive, right? Right. Like, you still have one. One hive is alive, right, Homestead Heart? Let me see. You still have one hive still going? Yes. yes. Okay. So what you want to do is transfer. Uh, now, that hive is okay, right? Is that hive okay? Or did they get attacked too? But you still want to prevent. At least the feeder part. Well, I well I didn't want to have to. Well, I'll show you again. I'll show you again. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is what you want to do again. Just in case you just got here. Okay. This is your hive body here. This is where your bees is living at. This is the queen down here. Everybody else saw this already. Here's a board that I just cut. I just cut this board the same shape and size as this box, as your hive body. No big deal. Don't get crazy about it because it's going to be inside. I put some normal screen from the screen door right here and just stapled it around. Plain old staples, okay? Then you take your feeder and put your feeder jar, just poke about 20 holes in it like that. In an old spaghetti bottle, a spaghetti jar. And then you flip that upside down. Make sure your ratio is 75% sugar and 25% water in this, this heat. Put it upside down on that screen. That's going to keep the bees from flying up every and book messing with you. You don't got to get suited and booted. That'll keep the bees in, the light out, and keep that plant it right there perfectly their tongues can reach up in that jar and get it you don't want that dripping down in there now take your uh, a throwaway hive body it don't even got to be a hive body you can literally just make a box 
set it on top, and then put your lid on. This is what we call a feeder box. That's all that's for. Nothing else goes in that box, nothing. So you can take it out, switch your feed out like that, put your new feed in, close it back up. No bees come out, no light gets in, and trust me, and, and no other creatures can get to that. They have to go through the hive to get the feed. They can't smell it as good and the liquid don't spill down into your, um, into your hive, okay? Don't use nothing this big yet until you got about four boxes on your hive. You got that many bees, you do not need this much feed because all it's gonna do is heat up and drip out into the hive and kill slowly kill your bees and attract sugar ants, red ants, uh, all of that jive, wasps, and they'll constantly be spending their energy fighting off enemies instead of going to forage and protecting and taking care of the babies, the brood, and the queen. You want all their energy to be focused on taking care of that queen, not constantly defending the hives because after the soldiers, once they need help, now the foragers got to help them Defend the hive constantly. Nobody, uh, Davida Braxton, it was a bald, right. It was a white bald face hornet. It was a white bald face hornet. I didn't get any of my LSU gold figs this year. I've never in my entire life seen this many bald face hornets. Never. They were all over my fig tree. Just, you can see their mandibles. The mandible is so big, I don't know whether I would be scared of a bite from them or a sting. So I just left my LSU gold. You see, I ain't said nothing about no LSU gold figs, right? I ain't said nothing about no apples, right? Yeah, because they out there. And I said, you know what? Bump them videos. Oh, yeah. Does she still have the uh, brood frame? Oh, do you still have... Uh, uh, um, Homes their heart, do you still have the brood frame? Cause I, we saw you take the the brood frames off. Yeah, they still alive. She said yes. Yeah, they still alive. They look dead. Put them back in the box. Put them back in or the maybe dark. Put them with the other hive that's still alive. There you go. See, that's why I love you. Put that frame back in. Put that into the new hive. They will accept them. And they'll clean out anything. If any is dead, that'll help them clean that frame out. Don't try to clean that out yourself. Let that new hive clean out the dead brood and take care of the new brood. They will accept them right into their hive so nothing goes to waste. It look like they're dead right now. Just because they bit a little hole in the, in the wax, they are not dead. Even if you saw ants in there coming in and out of that little tiny hole that's poked in there, they are not dead. The only thing that's going to kill them right now is all that sunlight and the heat from outside. Get them covered up. Uh, what if what if it has ants? When you when you transfer it like you was getting as much of that the ants off as you can, that's fine. Once you put that that um, frame into the strong hive, move that whole hive to another location on your land, they will fight those ants off. Those ants or those uh, bald-faced hornets won't, ha won't stand a chance, okay? Reduce your entrance. I have them in the house. Okay, okay. In the morning, in the morning, what do you have in the house? The bees? No, nah, that, nah, that ain't right, is it? Or just, just tell her to email you and y'all can talk. Or something maybe. Okay. So, yeah. So she can ask whatever she need to ask. Brood about. frames. Okay. Put those brood frames back into the hive. But do me a favor. Email me. Email me so I can give you my phone number so I can help. I want to help you and we get that hive up and running and, and safe. Because right now it's in a bad, bad spot. Because those bald faced hornets now. They're honed in on that exact location. Don't put nothing right there. No more. No more. 
Move your whole hive location to somewhere else, even if it's just 10 feet away. Get them away from there. Because the, oh crap, battery, I didn't know. Because those ball face hornets are going to come back there every day until there is no bee left standing. Trust me, I know. Okay? I even had a, I had a couple of videos of my hives being attacked. I was so heartbroken. I actually did a close-up with my drone, right? Flew right up on them. I was so heartbroken. I never released those videos. It's, it's, it's heart-wrenching to watch the, all the heads and the uh, butts be bitten off of your, your bees. It's just, all you can do is sit there and watch. Um, I've tried to save them on a couple of videos. I just, I just cut that. So I'm doing the best I can do to help you um, with the knowledge that I have. But trust me, we've been through a little bit of everything. We've been through a little bit of everything. As long as she got one hive, that one hive can grow and make all the rest of the hives. Because here's, here's the thing about why it's good that you have one hive. When you said you was going to buy about 15, whoa, 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 full-time job. Because 15 turns into 30 in a matter of weeks. I promise you, that one hive that you got left, that one hive, just to give you a little story, that one hive that we saved when I first bought bees years ago, that one hive turned into all the hives I've ever had. I've never purchased another hive. I got so good at catching my own bees that we started our own oh, business. Sorry. Right, and multiplying them, growing them. So we started selling our own nukes, and then we turned into bee rescuers. Trust me, this this journey that you on right now will take you somewhere where you never thought you would go. Ain't no way in hell, and 11 years ago, I would thought people would be calling me like, I got bees in my tree. And me and Lady Led suit up, boot up, like Batman and Robin, and we on our way. That's crazy. But trust me, I have never, we have only purchased one package of bees 10 years ago. That's it. It multiplies. You split the hive. They multiply. You split those. Within a season, you will have about four to six hives off of one nuke. Easy. Easy. Okay? So I'm here to help you, sis. If you could please email me at ledfarmer73. Can you put my number, put my thing in? Okay. Or call Lady Led so we can uh, go back and forth because I can't let your hive go. The world needs bees. And I'm telling you, I listen, you guys, everybody in the room tonight, y'all know me by now. I like to have fun. I like to cut up. I do my gardening. It's so much that I don't show you. It's so much that I can't show you because it's times I like to have fun, but it's times where I get down. I promise you, I've been doing this all my life. And right now, this is like serious time when I'm like, look, it's time to go to work. I can't let my sister fail. I won't let y'all fail. When we talk together, all of us like this, this is how we help each other. She helped me can, I promise you. I got a basket full of pears somebody gave me today and I came home talking about you and I can't wait to can. You saved me. I'll be damned if I'm not going to save you. This is how this community works. I don't know what other communities do. I don't know what other gardeners do. I don't know. But we know this is how we do. We stick together and we help each other. If you don't want to do that, this might be the wrong place for you. Because... This is about sharing knowledge. This ain't just saying, ooh, I know how to do this and we hide it for ourselves so we can look special. This community, we share knowledge so we can all grow, so we can all eat, so we can all be strong. And then we share that to other people on the outside. Maybe they want to come and join the community too. That's the only way this works. If we all want to keep secrets to each other and to ourselves, this won't work. That Don't you see? over hundreds and hundreds of years, that don't work. When we split apart like that, it don't work. So if we don't stick together, we're doomed, period. So this right here is how we do it. Please, Homestead Heart, please email me and we'll do the best we can do. Um, 
to get you up and going. I'm telling you, y'all don't even know. Me and Lady Led, we'll go outside and pitch black dark with flashlights on our forehead to handle our bees. We don't show those videos because usually we ain't got no it's camera. It's emergencies. It's emergencies. <laughs> you understand? Emergencies in the garden. That's why people say, ooh, I'm scared of bugs. Or, ooh, I don't want to get dirty. Let me tell you something. Wrong thing for you to be doing then. Because when it's time to get down and save my bees, save my garden, we do some strange stuff here on Easley Island in the middle of the night. <laughs> Save my chickens. Y'all don't, y'all have only seen a few videos of what I had to do with the fox and stuff. In the middle of the night, three in the morning. Oh, dudes breaking in my cars ain't the only thing we do here on Easley Island on this farm. No, stuff get wicked. Stuff that I can't show on camera, okay? Y'all know, y'all done seen them video, but I can... Only show you so much <laughs> without getting arrested. So, please, if you can please, and I know Homestead Heart, I know you got all that land, and I know pretty much what you have to do on a daily basis too. What people don't know is when you got livestock, it's just like bees, you got a garden, man, you don't never get no day off. You don't never get no time. Everything, everything you do, you got to work for it. You got chickens. Sapper Gardner, the Ession Family Garden, my man, I, I went through that. We just getting new chickens. They wipe me out too. When you want this right here and you want everybody want to get into this life right here, it's not a game. It's not a joke. I see that cannon. It was cute to watch. But you'll blow your whole damn head off if you walk away from that cooker or something and the pressure, ain't you ain't regulated or nothing. This ain't a game. That's why I've done so many canning videos that I haven't aired because at first it'd be fun and then stuff gets serious. I'm sitting at that canner like, uh, oh, okay, let me, wait a minute. Is the pressure is not jiggling high enough? No, it's not a game. See, I'm not a pro. So since I'm not a pro, the first video was fun and cute, but this is real. So I was like, yeah, this video going to suck because... I'm all sweating and nervous, you know, homestead hard, lady show they can do that without even thinking twice because they pros. Now this B game, I got you, sis. And anybody else that's down with this beekeeping, I got you. You need me, holler, please. If you can't get me, lady led, it's the truth. This woman right here, come here, come here, come here with your pretty self. Come here. I want them to see you. Come on. Hot. Uh, sexy dancer this woman right here <laughs> she raises our queens we don't buy queens no more she raises when our queens when you learn what it takes to make a queen you would be mad you ever bought one <laughs> that right right really? we were um, we had so many she was giving them away we, we were selling them and like damn i didn't know we was going to have a hundred percent success now, rate getting her made it is another story but but you you can have more queens um as long as you have brood right you have queens right and it's not as, as, as long as the queen you have is laying eggs though as long as you catch them before they're three three uh days they can be turned into a mm -hmm. queen so mm -hmm. But that's a conversation that I that I can have with you, Homestead Heart. Um, I mean, that's advanced. Let's get let's get through the, right. the regular stuff. But <laughs> right. um, but yeah, it's it's simple. Be, bees are simple. Yeah. And um, you it's kind of like a plant. Like you do too much to a plant, and you think you're caring for it, and sometimes you you harm it, not wanting to, but in, unintentionally. Right. Same with the hive. Just, you know, some stuff, just keep it simple. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this about our hives. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why when I say our honey that they produce is 100% organic, we don't do nothing. We leave them the hell alone. The best thing you can do to your hives, some people say, oh, no, I check them every day. I check them every week. Well, it's it's an ebb and flow to that. Yeah, it's just like yeah. your garden. Some some parts of the season you in there. You know, you gotta keep checking. Spring, and you some up on parts, it. you kinda like, all right, I know this is the, the the chill out part. 
So, so once you learn to ebb and the flow, you will know, okay, in the spring, yeah, I need mm -hmm. to be checking. But going closer to fall and getting ready for winter, you kind of, you have to adjust. Yeah, let them do their thing. But trust me, it's easier than all this stuff that people keep talking about. You got to do this. You got to. I've been successful for years by, you know what, leaving them the hell alone. Every time I go to poking with them too much and a couple of the people that we mentored, I got a guy at work that I mentored. You know what he do? Man, my hive failed. This is why. Because every five minutes he telling me, yeah, I went in the hive today. I'm like, why? Oh, I just wanted to see what they was doing. That's why I made the peekaboo cup for people like him, right? Because you, I even built a hive with a glass on it. I literally built my very first hive with so windows <laughs> because we nosy. I built how many? Two? I kept wanting to put a camera in there, but yeah. I built two hives with windows on it. The, the, I did a video not too long ago. You know, just it was just still shots. What? It's getting late. Okay, I, 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 got, I just I, got I had to save my family, yeah. baby. And Ready? I'm sure they probably need some sleep. I too. know. We're going to let you Let's go. Let's get with her. Okay, we're going to get with you. Listen, tomorrow, please, please call ASAP. First thing in the morning, I got to go to bed because you know I got to slang this mail like I got keys. But do me a favor, please contact us ASAP. If you can't contact me, please contact Lady Led. We got to get you up and running. Okay? Please. So, I'm telling you. We got you, sis. We got you, family. Everybody, if you need us, we here. This is all the cutie pooty crap that I do. That's to the side. Right now, it's business. So if you ever really need me, this is the real Lev Farmer 73, for real. This is how I get down. When I'm in this garden, no, I don't show everything as, as much as people want, want me to. I got pomegranates out there. People say, you don't grow pomegranates. Yes, I do. And they're out there. I walk past them in every single video. It's so much stuff that I don't show you, all right? So, everybody, please have a wonderful night. Please, homestead heart, prayers going out to you, but this is not a bad thing. It's just a learning curve. You didn't lose any money. I promise you this. I'm going to say this. With one hive leaving, it's almost a relief because you went in head first with two nukes. Two nukes for... That's a toughie. So, I got you. All right? Everybody, have a wonderful night. I'm about to go lay it down and soak these feet in some, some water somewhere because they almost smell like I'm still at work. Oh, no. I know. Like old chicken bone marrow. Listen, I love <laughs> I love you guys. Everybody, have a wonderful night. Come say goodbye and good night to the family. Goodbye, good night, good night everybody. Please we'll have a wonderful night. Your email, we'll be Sahara. looking for you, okay? Because I, I don't want you to fail. Not not this, not this. I know I couldn't save you from the cows running across your garden last year, but I, I can save you from this. We can help you with this one, okay? And everybody, if you didn't see the cows running across her garden, please go see that. That that was incredible. So. Everybody have a wonderful night. Lev Farmer 73 and Lady Led, we love you and we out. This is community. Community, everybody. We love you. Have a wonderful night. Good night.